All right. Today, being the first day back, I wanted to do something that we've already done before, kind of like we did the last time we met, right? We did. We took two things we've already done before in two different places and put them together. You remember that? So today again, we're going to take two different place, two different things we've done in different places and put them together. All right. So here was the first thing that we've already done. You already know how to do this. Y equals x plus two. How do I graph that? Two is the y-intercept. So I go up two on the y-axis and put a dot. And then I use my my slope, right? What's my slope? One. One. So I rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. Or fall one, run backwards one, right? All the way to the edge of the graph in both directions. What do I do now? I draw the line, right? How would it change if it was this? Well, it would be a dotted line first. Why would it be a dotted line? Because it's not equal to. Because it's not equal to. It's just less than. So first of all, it would be a dotted line. Okay. But we graph. We would graph it exactly the same way we graphed that, right? Okay. And so now we have to what? What would you say? Shade. shade. So it's less than, so where would we shade? Yeah. Below. Right? But what if it also said this? Y is greater than negative X plus 3. Well, let's do minus 3 because that's easier to see. Sorry. 1, 2, 3. Rise 1, run backwards 1. This is not going to be exactly to good because it's not to scale, so just trust me here. Okay, if, we had some, if I had some graph paper easy to reach, I could do it. Sorry. Are you going to be okay with this? Yes. Solid or dotted? Dotted. And what, where do I shade? Above because? It's greater than. So, have I shaded yet? No. 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 <laughs> when do I shade? When you graph all of Okay, so I graph this one and I graph this one, so now? Is there any more? No, no more. So now I shade. Where do I actually shade? This area right here, right? Why do I shade that area right there? Because that's where both of them are true, right? Now, please understand this graph is not right. It's not supposed to meet right there. Are you okay with that? Okay. I guess I could have gotten a piece of graph paper. I'm sorry. You going to be okay? All right. But we shade where both of them are true, correct? Yes. So how is it going to be different then? First of all, how is it going to be different if it's this? It's going to be a parabola. Knowing what we know about transformations, what do I do with this? I move it up to. Is it parent function shape? Yes. So I go over 1 from the vertex, up 1, because 1 squared is 1. I go over 2 from the vertex, and up how many? 4. 4, because 2 squared is 4. If I could go over, I mean, I can go over 3, how much could I go up? 9. 9, because 3 squared is 9. It's going to be what way up here, off the graph, right? But I also know parabolas are symmetric, so it looks like that. Correct? Yes. Because 1 squared is 1. And I went over 2 and up 4 because 2 squared is 4. I'm sorry, I did that real quick because we already did that in transformations in our tra transformations unit earlier this year. Okay, you okay with that? Okay, so how is it different than if we have this? Do I graph it any different? No, absolutely not. I still go up 2 put my vertex there, and then I have parent function shape because there's no multiplier here. So 1, 1, 2, 4, 1, 1, 2, 4. But what kind of parabola do I draw? Uh, a dotted. And here's the, here's the problem, guys. There's not an above and a below anymore. Yeah. What is there? Inside. Inside and outside. and outside. So we have to figure out if I should shade inside or outside. Well, how should I decide? What if we chose a point? Okay. Yeah. Which what point would be easiest to choose? Uh, the vertex. The vertex. Yeah. Wait, the vertex? Uh, the origin. Oh, the origin, right? When's the only time I can't choose the origin? 
when the line's on. The yeah, when the parabola goes through the origin, I can't choose the origin. Okay? So if I plug this into my um, inequality, I would get 0 is less than 0, zero. squared, zero, 0, plus 2. So 0 is less than 2. That's true. That is true. So I shade where it's true. So in this particular parabola, would I shade inside or outside? Outside. 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 So all this stuff right out here, right? All this stuff that way. But what happens if I also have another one? Right, so if all I have is one inequality, I'm done, right? I can, I can actually color all this stuff right out here, right? But what if I also have that? Well, let's graph. Let's graph it. One, two, three, four. Is that parent function shape? Yeah, but it's going down. Yeah, but it's going down, right? So over one, down one, over two, down four. Down one, over two, down four. And it's, is it solid or dotted? Solid. Dotted. What would it look like if it was solid? Let's make it solid because we haven't had a solid one so far. Okay. So it would be greater than or equal, right? Yeah. So it would look like this. Where would I shade here? Well, let's use the origin. Let's use the origin because it doesn't go through the origin. But in this particular red parabola, where is the origin in, in relation to it? Zero. It's on the inside, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So if I choose 0, 0, I get 0 is greater than 4. No. Is 0 greater than 4? No. No. So in this particular parabola, I have to shade on the outside of it. Like that, right? Well, where are they both true? Uh, so like yes. here and here. So what if I said to you, choose a point that is a solution? Okay, then it would be like would be something in the green. Something nine, in the one. green. Nine one would be a solution because that's way over here, up here somewhere, right? What's another point that's in the solution? 10, 1. 10, 1. What about one over here? Negative 10, 1. Negative 10, 1. It, it works, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Questions? So if I give you one inequality, like I did the, this one right here, this was the blue one, right? If I gave you one inequality, could you graph that inequality and shade? What if I gave you a system of inequalities? I gave you these two. Could you graph them both and shade appropriately? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So the other thing that you're going to be asked to do on your homework is something like this. 2x squared is less than 50. Have we done something like this before? So we've never done 2x squared equals 50? Oh, yes. oh, yes. Okay. How would we solve this? I wouldn't. Divide, divide by 2. x squared equals 25. Square root. Square root, square root. Oh, gosh, guys. You forgot all of this over Thanksgiving. Thank you. Remember that? Yeah. So guess how you solve this problem? Okay. By doing this. Literally making it an equation and getting your two answers. Okay? Now you have to go back. What two answers did I get? Positive 5 and negative 5. I have to figure out where this is true. I have to figure out where the inequality is true. How many possible places are there that it could be true? It could be true over here. It could be true in the middle. And it could be true over here, right? Well, here's the deal, guys. Because of the way inequalities work, it's either going to be true in between them or it's going to be true on the outside of them. It's not going to just be true right here. It's not going to just be true right here. It's either going to be in between them or on the outside of them. Does that make sense? We just have to figure out which one is which. So what should we try? If we're being safe, we're going to try three possible points. One of them would be over here. 
Like what? Negative 6. One of them would be in between. Like what? Zero. Zero. And one of them would be over here. Like what? Six. Six. Okay? So which one do you want to check first? Negative 6. Okay. Negative 6 squared. Positive 36 times 2. 36 times 2. 72. Is 72 less than 50? Then that point is not right. Guess what's going to happen if we do 6? Well, what's 6 squared? 36 times 2 is 72. That's not greater than 50 or less than 50. What about if we try 0? What's 0 squared? 0 squared is times 2? 0 is less than 50. That is true. That means my answer is in between these two. But now we have to talk about the 5 and negative 5. Are they part of the solution? No, because it's not equal. Because it's not equal to. So what goes here? Dotted like an open circle. Open circle. Open circle. But where I shade is in between the two of them. What's a way to write this? Algebraically, what's a way to write this? X is greater than negative 5. And x is less, less than, than five. five. Either one of these are acceptable answers. Okay? I would like this. Okay? Any questions? Those are the things you got to be able to do on your homework tonight. You've got to be able to take one inequality, one quadratic inequality, graph it, and shape. Then you have to be able to take a system of inequalities, graph each one of them, tell yourself which way you would shade, and then after everything is graphed, then you actually shade. And then you have to be able to solve algebraically. Now, is it always going to be plus or minus 5? No, because if we factor something, like if we solve it by factoring, we might get x equals negative 1 and x equals 4, right? So I'd have to say negative 1 and 4. Well, what should I check? Probably zero, right? Isn't that the easiest one? And if it's not in between, where is it? Outside. Okay? Questions? <clears throat> Any questions? Go ahead and get to work.